What do walking, eating, and exercising all have in common? Well, they all require us to contract and use our skeletal muscles. But how do our muscles even achieve this? If we look at a muscle, this could be in our arm or a leg, that isn't really important right now. If we split the muscle in half, we can see that the muscle is really just a bundle of fascicles. Each fascicle is a bundle of muscle cells, also called myofibers. Within each myofiber, there are lots of long cylindrical organelles called myofibrils. Looking closer at the myofibril, you can see that it's divided horizontally into units called sarcomeres. Each sarcomere is divided from its neighbors by a z-line. Attached to the z-line is a protein filament called actin and a spring-like protein called titan. Titan's job is to help re-lengthen the sarcomere after it is constricted as well as to stabilize another important protein filament called myosin inside of the sarcomere. The two protein filaments, actin and myosin, work together to constrict the sarcomere like a man pulling on a rope. Looking closer at the filaments, we can see that when the myosin head, little pink hammer looking thing, is relaxed, it's actually attached to the actin filament. Once an ATP molecule binds to the myosin, it changes structure and detaches itself to cock itself forward. The myosin then splits the ATP into an ADP and a phosphate molecule, which then makes the myosin head reconnect to the actin filament further down to form a cross bridge. The myosin then releases the ADP and phosphate performing a power stroke, prompting it to return to its starting position until a new ATP molecule attaches to it. But if that's how it works, then how are we able to choose when our muscles flex? Well, there are two more proteins that wrap around the actin filament. One acts as a bodyguard, and the other as the guy who just moves the bodyguard out of the way. Looking at a muscle cell, you can see that there is a motor neuron running to it. When your brain sends a signal down through the motor neuron, it spreads throughout the muscle cell. The sarcomeres have another organelle that stretches across them, called the sarcoplasmic reticulum. On either side of the sarcoplasmic reticulum is a T-tubule that the signal continues to pass through. The T-tubules then pass a signal throughout the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The sarcoplasmic reticulum uses ion pumps to build up a high concentration of calcium ions, and when it receives the signal from the brain, it releases the calcium ions into the sarcomeres. These ions then bind to the green protein, troponin, causing it to change structure and pull the purple bodyguard protein, tropomyosin, out of the way so the myosin head can create a cross bridge and go about its business. When the signal ceases, the calcium ions are pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum and the troponin, without calcium, returns to its previous position, forcing the tropomyosin back into its guarding position so that myosin can't complete a cross bridge or a power stroke. To summarize, our brain sends a signal to our muscle which releases calcium ions that allow the sarcomere to constrict and make your arm go from this to this. And that is the sliding filament model.